human spirit. Here we go. Y'all still here? What is your human spirit? We're all three-part beings. God made us three-part beings. We have our flesh body, we have our soul or our mind, and then we have our human spirit, right? We change our mind, we give our mind and our soul to God. That's what's gonna belong to God for eternity. That's the part that's saved. Our flesh can't be saved because our flesh, there's, the Bible said there's no good thing that dwelleth in it. Now you can't use the Gnostics view of saying that all matter is evil and our flesh is evil. You can't use that because when God made man, he said it is good. Right? But we are three part beings and our human spirit is very significant. Very significant in this because our flesh will die one day. Our soul can belong to God when we're saved. But guess what? Your spirit can be surrendered to the enemy. Uh oh. So we always wondered for years, can a Christian have a demon spirit? Yes, a demon can attach himself and operate through a surrendered human spirit because you're three part being. Oh yeah, I know it's, it's about to get real in here. This is why we have to be so careful at what we do. Romans 6 and 16 says, Know ye not that whom you yield yourselves servant to obey, his servants ye are to whom you obey, whether of sin unto death or of obedience unto righteousness. So whoever you yield yourself servant to, if you yield your human spirit servant, the enemy becomes your boss. Are y'all listening? Y'all still here? First Thessalonians breaks it way down and says, and the very God of peace sanctify you what? Holy, that means all of you, and then he's gonna name all of you. I pray God your whole spirit and soul and body. See that spirit, it's a small s. Whenever it's a small s, it's talking about your human spirit. When it's a capital S, it's talking about God's spirit. Your human spirit is reserved for God to operate through. That's how you commune with him. That's how you talk to him, through your human spirit. Why? Because we're flesh. So in order to come to God in spirit and in truth, we have to use our spirit to unite with his. Are y'all here? When we are gods, our human spirit is under his protection. But demons desire to have us control our human spirit so they can have access to it. In other words, the devil desires for you to tap in your human spirit and try to use it yourself and become one with it because then you open yourself up. See, as long as God has your spirit in reserve, as long as your spirit is, your spirit is reserved unto God for him only, then the enemy can't touch it. But the minute you try to use it, oh, y'all better listen to me. The minute you get clairvoyant, the minute you start trying to move an object without touching it, and the minute you start getting into all of this magic and these different things, you take control of it, and now you're open for demonic oppression. Why is this important? You're about to see in just a minute. Deuteronomy says, there shall not be found among you anyone that maketh his son or his daughter to pass through the fire or that uses divination and observer of times, which is your horoscopes and, and reading the suns and all that, or an enchanter or a witch, a charmer or a consulter with familiar spirits, or a wizard or a necromancer. For all that do these things are what? An abomination unto the Lord. Why? Because these are the things that those that don't recognize God as the true authority over their human spirit, these are the things that they did. So God said, when you go into the land, you can't do those things because I'm the Lord, I'm the God of your spirit. And Deuteronomy 8, 18 and 13 says, thou shalt be perfect with the Lord thy God, meaning that you're not gonna cheat on me by becoming one with something else that's not of me. How do we tap into our human spirit? How does the devil get access to it? How do these demons come and start bothering us and oppressing us? Whole lot of ways, and I'm gonna name some of them right now. Yeah, and I tried to find the most demonic picture I could. 
so I could find a doorway. This is the doorway into the supernatural. This is the doorway into your human spirit. And here are some things that bring the enemy into, those, into that area. This is a family tree. Demon spirits can come into you through generational curses. What your mother did, your father did, great-grandfather did. Somebody may have pledged in a fraternity or sorority or took an oath that was demonic or pledged to a false god or did something or messed with magic or something. Somebody in your bloodline did something that they shouldn't have done and that can create a curse in your bloodline and it'll stay there until it's addressed. That's why everybody in the family gets divorced when they get married. Everybody has a child out of wedlock. Everybody's, uh, uh, you know, uh, every girl can't ever get married. They stay single forever. Something's wrong with everybody. There's something wrong when every, it's something wrong with the family when everybody is going through the same junk. There's something in your family tree or in your bloodline that the enemy sowed in there. Can I keep going? The occult, anytime you mess with the occult, playing uh, light as a feather, the Bloody Mary in the mirror, uh, you know, all of those different games you used to play, or playing with a Ouija board, or going to see a, 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 a witch doctor, or tarot cards, or getting your fortune told, or reading your horoscope, any of the, these things. When you do these things, you are tapping into the power of your human spirit, which is supposed to be reserved unto God. You open yourself up, and a demon can enter. Triple X, sex, immorality, anytime, masturbation, porn, uh, same sex, sex, especially bisexuality and homosexual and lesbian, all these kinds of illicit sex acts, lust, perversion, these things are doorways into your human spirit. And when you begin to enjoy them or love them and can't stop doing them, a demon will enter right into your human spirit and take control of it. Can I keep going? Fear, anytime you are traumatized, anytime you are scared, anytime something frightens you to death, especially like the death of a loved one, that, that's, a, that's a, a big deal a lot of times. And you're fearful, you're scared, you're afraid. The Bible said God has not given us the spirit of fear, but power, love, and a what? Sound mind, why is he saying that? Because when you experience fear, your mind is not sound and you open yourself up and demons can come in especially if you're scared of them. Abuse, any kind of abuse, neglect, physical, verbal, any kind, sexual abuse, spiritual abuse, any kind of abuse can be an open door for the devil to come in and bring a spirit to reside in you. This is why a lot of people that experience pain and different things, they, they create a whole alter ego. They create a whole a different personality, multiple personality disorder. But a lot of times, that's not another personality. That's a demon spirit. And then finally, oh boy, becoming one with your mind, becoming one with your human spirit, trying to get in there and get the gnosis, get the knowledge. I want to know, so I'm going to surpass the rules of God and I'm going to go after the true knowledge. I'm going to tap into my human spirit and I'm going to do some things that's going to bring me information or knowledge that is an easy way to be filled with demonic power. I'm going to talk about something now that some of you may have heard of before, but I mentioned it in my part two video and at the end of the video I mentioned it right before altar call and I talked about a spirit that was coming in to, among the children and getting on top of the young girls and the young boys and wrestling with them and they couldn't speak they couldn't say anything they couldn't even say Jesus they you know they their voice would just be taken away from them as they speak and or a lot of times they're dreaming of sexual fantasies and different things and these things manifest in their sleep and it gives young boys wet dreams and it gives girls these these you know these uh, 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 night shakes and different things where it's violently holding them down these spirits these spirits have a name and the name is Incubus and Succubus. These are very real spirits. They are very real spirits. Your, vo your most vulnerable moment is when you sleep. And a lot of times the enemy comes when you sleep. These spirits, Incubus and Succubus, are very, very real and they're being dealt with a lot 
especially now, a lot of people are having sexual dreams and actually having physical releases. They have a scientific name for it for young boys. They call it a wet dream. And it's when a boy actually ejaculates in his sleep. Well, something's very wrong with that because the dream he had that manifested that was a sexual perverted dream. And there was something very real that came in his room. And while he thought he may have been asleep, there was something really going on while he laid there. Incubus and succubus. Incubus is the non-physical, immaterial male sexual partner in congressus subtilis, which is sexual union with a non-physical or astral entity. I'll talk about astral in just a minute. Succubus is the non-physical, immaterial female sex partner. So the young girls mostly experience incubus, young boys experience succubus, or not young at all. Grown women, everything. They experience this, and these are kindred to what they call a mare demon. The Latin word for nightmare is incubo, which means to lie up on. That's where we get the word nightmare. In Africa, they call these spirits the night husband and night wife. You know why they call it that? Because most young ladies that experience this incubus spirit coming in can't get married. You ever met women that you just know should have been married a long time ago, then they're reaching 30 and 40 years old? No husband. You know why? Because this is a very jealous spirit. So when this spirit latches on and it's coming in in the night and it comes with a familiar face, that's why it's a familiar spirit. So to come as somebody you may know or somebody you may fantasize about or some recording artist, a movie star, it may come as in that form, but it'll come in and it'll jump on you and you'll feel it and it'll feel very real. And then every relationship you try to embark upon, something bad happens and it gets canceled and they run the man off. He don't want you. You knew it was a good relationship. You knew I'm just about to get married sometimes you can't even have kids and you wonder what is going on it's because that jealous spirit won't let you go had a young girl who was experiencing this she told me she said every night something would come in my room and it would climb on top of me and it would literally just hold me down and fight with me and and it told me one day I heard it it said you're mine and I'll never let you go she said in every relationship she's ever been in with every relationship with a man has failed she could never have a good relationship with men she never had one it just every man something would always happen she said so finally there was this stud this butch girl and this girl came to her and said, well, I'll be your woman. She was like, okay, no man is working, so I'm going to try this girl. She said she never had any kind of sexual desires or, I mean, sexual relationship with this girl or nothing. This girl was just a stud that walked around and protected her. But what the girl was doing, because she violated something immorally, what happened was she said in the middle of the night, something would come in her room, hold her down, and she couldn't get up. She said, I want to see what it is. So one night she said she put a, a, a full-length mirror on the side of the bed so she could look in it. She said, and she waited that night. And she said, as soon as she felt like she was asleep, something came, it jumped on top of her. She said she woke up, looked in that mirror, and it was a winged woman over the bed, holding her down. It's real stuff, y'all. See, we're so comfortable. We just don't believe this stuff can happen. Why would we believe that? Oh, but we come in church and we believe the power of God. We believe in the, 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 that when we sing, the power of God will come down. We believe when somebody speaks in tongues that it's of God. We believe that when the sick is healed and all these supernatural things, oh, they're all good when it's supernatural concerning Jesus. But we don't want to talk about the winged women that's coming in our bedroom or the winged man or the night husband that's keeping us from being married. And we've been a, a single for so long and don't know why. According to many church fathers, an incubi, incubi is an angel who fell because of lust. According to Hebrew legends, the incubi is a lewd demon child of Lilith, which seeks sexual intercourse with men and women and can assume either sex in order to have sex with humans. This is real stuff, and there are people in here right now know exactly what I'm talking about because it's happening to them. Or a lot of times when you're married, if you're married, the, these spirits, they come in a marriage and they'll come lay right in between you and your wife and you'll have a dream that you married to, you and your wife are married and some old girlfriend is in the, you'll have a dream that that girlfriend is laying in the bed with y'all or that boyfriend. But you're not, it's not really a dream.
Can I keep going? Another way demons come into you is this one. Idolized entry. What is idolized entry? Jeremiah says, thus saith the Lord, cursed be the man that trusteth in man and maketh flesh his arm and whose heart departed from the Lord. What is he saying here? Oh, idolized entry is when you idolize somebody. When you idolize a musician or an artist and you got the picture up on the wall and you're writing all the lyrics in your book and you just, oh, I just love him when I hear his song. Oh, he just make me feel so good. Y'all, I show pictures of artists in church and young girls start screaming, ah, ah, they, they go crazy. You know why? Because that's their idol. They've idolized them. So when once you idolize something, you give them a high place in your life. Who's the Lord of the high places? Who's the Lord of the things that fly? That's Baal. You just become a worshiper of Baal. <laughs> Baal singers, Baal's performers, Baal's musicians. They're singing about sex. They're singing about drugs. They're singing about killing. They're singing about everything that is evil. And you just, oh, your heart beats fast. You get this feeling. You have to go to the concert. You got to buy the CD. I don't care what G. Craig Lewis say. I'm going to listen to this because this music, I love this music. Idolized entry. Another way these demons come in through your, to your human spirit, astral projection. Oh, see a lot of folks in church don't want to touch this stuff, but it's very, very real. Astral projection, a lot of times when you sleep, you astral project or you're not really sleep or you're in between sleep and your spirit, your human spirit dislodges itself from your body to talk to God a lot of times. Job says it like this, Job 33, for God speaks the first time in one way and then the second time in another through a person, though the person does not perceive it. In a dream, a night vision, when deep sleep falls on people as they sleep in their beds, then he gives a revelation to people and terrifies them with warning. So he's talking about REM, deep sleep, when you are totally still. A lot of times God connects with your spirit and speaks there. So if God can do that, guess what? Astral projection or astral travel is an interpretation of any form of outer body experience that assumes the existence of an astral body separate from the physical body and capable of traveling outside of it. Astral projection or travel denotes the astral body leaving the physical body to travel into the astral plane. So this is what it looks like. Yeah, this is what happens. People can actually pray. People can actually talk to shymen and use magic and witchcraft and they can get down and sit down in this position right here and they can send their spirit to your room. There are men that are paid to do this. There are famous people that go and pay people to do this. They even pray over music. They take the master. I got John Todd saying this, and then I also had a demon tell me this when I was casting him out of Kevin Thornton. And a demon told me that they take the master and they pray spells on the master so that the artist could astral project into the bedrooms of the young girls that are listening. This is why they scream when I call their name or show their picture because they feel like they know them. It's a familiar spirit. I know them, why? Because they've been visited. As soon as you lift your hands in worship to these artists, you open yourself up and these guys know how to use this stuff and they'll send spirits right to you. Coming in the night. Another way. Oh, this is a big one in America. I don't know about Canada. Yoga. Yes.